Hey everyone, it's Chris here from Rustic Outdoors and we're back with another adventure. Um, we headed down here to West Virginia. Um, we're at a place called the Dolly Sods. Um, we're gonna spend two nights, three days down here, uh, anywhere from a 20 to a 25 mile loop. And right now we just got parked up. There is a ton of people here. So, uh, not planning on huge miles today. Um, maybe four to five miles today. It did take us about seven hours to get down here from our house. Um, but tomorrow, that will be like the bulk of the whole entire trip. And then uh, we're gonna try to make it where on that third day, um, we only got about five or six miles left to hike out. But so far, this place is pretty cool. Um, I've heard that this is the highest plateau east of the Mississippi River, so that's pretty cool. Never been here. Um, we originally planned to go down to Grayson Highlands. However, now you have to pay for parking down there, and the backpacker's parking lot is all filled up. We didn't feel safe leaving our vehicle at the Mountain Rogers uh, parking area because we've heard of break-ins and stuff like that. Then we were planning on doing the Virginia Triple Crown, which is McAfee Knob, Dragon's Tooth, and Tinker Cliffs. Uh, we were just going to do about a 35 mile loop around there. Forest fire. So, right around that area, uh, Gina caught it right in time last night. Um, and then we, check, uh, we checked on the ATC website, and sure enough, there was a forest fire. So, because of that reason, we made it <laughs> down here and. Uh, this should be a pretty awesome trip. Not huge miles, but um, someplace I've never been and the views already are just spectacular. So, I'm gonna get all packed up. Um, I am trying uh, some new gear on this trip. We also got the duplex. Um, so, sharing a tent this time, keeping our base weight real low. Um, my base weight's only like seven pounds and Gina's is about the same, so. Um, I'm going to get all packed up though, quit running my mouth, and then we are going to find this trailhead and uh, hop on this thing. Alright, well, we found Bear Rocks Trail. A um, little confusing around here. There's a, there's a sign, but it said Red Creek, so for some reason, in my mind, I thought it was the Red Creek Trailhead. It was not. Um, we looked around for it for about eh, 20 minutes, but we found it. Uh, we just had to go a little back. Uh, we actually parked in the overflow uh, parking lot, and that's what was kind of confusing. Um, all right, so weather condition for this um, for this next couple of days. Today is supposed to be nice. Uh, it is going to be windy, so I do apologize about the wind noise. I'll try to edit out as much as I can uh, in post. Uh, tonight, dropping down into some weather forecasts are saying in the 40s. Some are saying in the 50s. Regardless, um, I just brought my 40 degree quilt. Um, I think that'll be plenty. Um, I can always layer up. I did bring my alpaca hoodie which i'm wearing right now and i brought um i brought my uh synthetic jacket so uh, tomorrow i think the temperature is actually going to be nicer than today but it's going to be cloudy um and then uh, see today's saturday so monday when we hike out of here um it will be some saying that it's going to rain some forecast is saying that it's not going to rain so who knows regardless uh with only five or six miles we should be able to uh, beat the rain uh, so let me show you guys like the actual trail all right so like i said this trail is extremely muddy and it's extremely wet. Just pick a side, hun. Go. I saw a sheet 
Because you're like, I know, but you're making me block down. Everywhere you step, it's going to be muddy. I know. All right. So, there's a couple of things I'm testing here. One of them actually kind of sounds like a good idea. But, I am rocking some bedrock sandals. Uh, I've had these things for a while now. Uh, I am just testing them out. Um, it's not because it's wet and everything like that even though i would say that it kind of makes sense to rock some uh sandals going through here because terrain's really not that bad uh and like, like i said it's extremely wet and uh and muddy so sandals will dry out uh super quick uh for this trip I'm rocking the Palante V2. Uh, Gina it has the same exact pack. Um, and I know some of you expect <laughs> me to be on the Arizona Trail right now because uh, I made that gear video. Uh, I'll make a separate video explaining kind of what happened. But the TLDR, uh, Gina kind of hurt her knee pretty bad. We were in Patagonia, and uh, we took two days off to try and get the, the swelling and stuff like that down, and we could not get her knee uh, to stop hurting. Um, we thought that it was going to quit hurting after that first night, but then that second day she woke up and she was still in some pain. So, instead of injuring herself further, um or you know something happening long long term you know with her health and everything uh we just we bailed on that trip um it was kind of a bitter bittersweet thing too i think if i was going to go out there again uh i would probably go out there in late february early march um it was hot but you know it was the desert so I'm pretty sure it would have been hot regardless any time that we would have went out there but I think it would have been less hot uh, if, we, if we went would have went out there uh, a tad bit earlier than what we actually did but you know obviously Gina's health is pretty important to me um, if she wants to continue doing these adventures and these trips and everything you know um, anytime that you get an injury um you need to take care of it because nothing you know yeah not being on a trip or not being on a trail sucks but not being able to hike period because you've experienced a uh, significant injury um that would suck even more so uh, kind of is what it is you know i had fun while we were out there and then um when we came back we actually talked about doing like some of these shorter trips uh, places that we ain't never been Jean, this is the first time gina's actually been out east hiking so uh you know she looked at the mountains earlier and she was like wow they're so blue and i was like yeah i was like they got you know the out east mountains have this blue haze to them where out west it's really not like that so um it's pretty cool you know and then hopefully we get out there to virginia and do the virginia triple crown i think she'll really enjoy that trip so i know i did when i was out there so pretty cool um so let's talk about this trail a little bit uh number one why is it called dolly sods the sods is because this is old cattle uh land um, I'm pretty sure, and the word Dolly extends from an old German settler. I believe his name was John Dolly, but he pronounced it in Germany, he pronounced it D-A-H-L-E. -A um, and when he came to the U.S., he Americanized his name, and it became Dolly, D-O-L-L-Y. So... That's kind of why they call this place the Dolly Sods. 
um, as far as I read in a way or the little bit of research that I did uh, second thing about this trail or this whole area is not a lot of signs out here uh, <laughs> very very easy to get turned around there is a lot of different trails um, some of them just go to campsites some of them go to just kind of whatever um, but the signs out here is very slim you can kind of see the uh, terrain it is <clears throat> nice and wet in some areas nice and muddy in others um, no, you should just went right here just you can spot go Thank you. <sighs> now I can understand a lot of rocks yeah uh, so far guys the bedrocks are working out great a little dirty but their sandals I do have um, another pair of energy toe socks and I have a pair of sleep socks that I'll be using when I sleep and then I got some like baby wipes I can wipe myself down at the end of the day so I'm not 100% uh, muddy Um, so animals, uh, alright, so for animals on this trip, um, there's deer in the area, um, and then there's bears in the area, however, all the videos and everything that I checked out, um, I never saw a bear <laughs> being posted, um, if you guys have, then uh, link me the uh, video down below. Uh, I'm not saying there isn't bears in the area. I'm just saying that, you know, from all of the research that I've done, um, I've just, I've never seen one. So, uh, we will still be hanging our food and stuff like that, though. I always do that in bear country. Unless I can't, like in the desert where it's kind of almost impossible but so far this bear what is it bear creek bear rock, bear rock trail it's rocky. <laughs> it's rocky and it is wet <laughs> wide, it yeah nice and wide uh that parking lot back there I know it is the weekend, but that parking lot is crazy. Like, there is a ton of people here. A lot of them look like they were just like um, day hiking and stuff like that, which is which is great, you know. That means hopefully we will get the uh, some of it to ourselves. Um, there's also a hidden gym around here called a lion's head we're gonna try to go for it I do have the GPS for it um, however I think it is kind of like a rock scramble and that'll be tomorrow so it's just gonna depend really on how many miles we do tomorrow you know how early we wake up and stuff like that um, but we're gonna try we're gonna try to go see it I like this head because it looks pretty cool. <clears throat> nice uphill. <laughs> Pleasant. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Pleasant uphill. <laughs> Love going up. <laughs> That's completely wrong, by the way. Everyone that's hiked with me knows that I am much faster going down, even though I got bad knees. But I 
not bad. Now we're kind of in this woodsy like area. Okay. Yeah. And that's going to be like a theme to this trip too. Um, from what I've seen, a lot of it is, um, a lot of it's open fields and then you'll go into the forest then you'll come out of forest you'll be in open fields uh, <laughs> a lot of change out here uh, and there are a couple of creeks or rivers that we are going to have to ford uh, in fact we're going to have to ford one today I believe uh, hopefully it's not that big of a deal it hasn't rained in a while so <sighs> on the way up here to drive up here we I was checking out the creeks uh, as we were driving past them uh, none of them looked um, overfilled or anything like that they looked they looked pretty good I'd walk across them uh, so like I said, hopefully that's not a big deal. There's another one. That's not a game trail. That's probably a campsite, I would imagine, in those trees back there. Yeah. But a lot of stuff like this, or like that, out here. So, really have to pay attention. Make sure you're still on the right path. Because... You could easily take one of those and then you'll be off trail and you'll walk around in circles <laughs> to figure it out. <laughs> but uh, pretty cool. I love stuff like this. You can see the mountains in the background and these like plateaus or uh, meadows. <sighs> Super cool. I'm just happy to be outside, man. I like to be honest. <laughs> uh, I did not think we were going to be uh, going on a trip <clears throat> after learning about that forest fire in Virginia. My uh, spirit got a little low because it was like almost like everything that we were trying to figure out what to go, you know, what to hike or what to do. Like something kept popping up, you know, and I was like, man, it's like I just want to want to hike. <laughs> but, uh, well, we came to our first intersection the Dobbins grade trail we are not going to take that trail um, I've heard that's one of the worst trails to take around here especially when it's wet like this um, but we're actually going to stay on the trail that we've been on and we're going to take it down and then we'll start making like our lollipop uh, type of loop so gonna wait for Gina to uh, get out of the restroom <laughs> and uh, continue on so far not bad um, ton of camping around here I mean just a ton and really it's pretty close to the uh, to the road too so if you came out here and you just want to camp do some car camping maybe bring some heavier stuff yeah I could definitely see uh, why people would uh, do that but we're not gonna do that um, it's way too early to even think about making camp and uh, it's way too close to the road for uh, for me so well we just crossed our first water crossing on this trip uh, I didn't film because there was just a bunch of people around looks like the uh, boys and girl scouts I think they're scouts they were <laughs> A little envious and me in the sandals because they kept looking at the water and I knew that they were thinking how am I gonna cross this thing without getting my feet soaked <laughs> and then I just jumped down there <laughs> I looked at the current made sure it wasn't bad <laughs> and I walked on through and then Gina <laughs> Gina's wearing shoes she's wearing trail runners and uh, <laughs> she uh, she did the same thing so it's right yeah oh yeah they're that's what i'm saying like they're gonna constantly be wet but pretty uh 
pretty funny because they you just you knew because they were they were oh oops they were staring at the uh that water pretty hard <laughs> trying out trying to uh come up with the the quickest route i crossed and uh, be honest there ain't no quickest route it's just uh i don't think it was that bad but there ain't no quick route <laughs> That is a nice trip hazard. Ooh. <laughs> well, Rocky. There a squirrel or a deer? Oh, a little squirrel. Actually, a little bird. <laughs> a little Rocky. Yeah, almost. Alright. <laughs> this is a little better. Alright. Looks like they both go to the same. So that's what I'm talking about. Like that's probably the official trail right there. But then you got this path too. Now it does link up, but uh, it's just another example of uh, all these interconnecting trails out here. Look at that view. It is nice. Ah, and then you can kind of see the trail like way over there, and. Uh, that is where we are headed. <clears throat> so I just met a gentleman and uh, he was rocking some uh, some uh, sandals too. And then he was talking about how he likes the, uh, well, he don't like to hike in the zeros, but he likes to run in the zero Z trail uh, sandals, which I own a pair of those too, so does Jana. And uh, so we was talking about some pretty cool like outdoor sandals and then uh pretty much telling them that uh out here it just kind of doesn't matter because uh your feet are probably gonna get nice and nice and wet regardless Woo! we go down <laughs> we were up and when you go up, you have to go down. And then you repeat the process. All right. Came to a trail junction. Bear Rocks Trail, that away, Raven Ridge Trail. Uh, I want to go ahead and say that Raven Ridge is right there. And the other part of Raven Ridge is over here. This sign was laying on the ground. I did go ahead and pick it up. Um, I had to fix the uh, rocks and stuff like that. Probably because the wind um, knocked it over or something like that or something happened. I don't know. But in the process of doing that, ugh, got a little got a little stinger the wood on the the post uh, it got me pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some water on it clean it out real good and then uh, figure out if we go that away for Raven Ridge or if we go that away for Raven Ridge don't know yet but I'm gonna check the uh, GPS all right we're on the Raven Ridge trail now um i figured it out and uh i don't think we're gonna be on this trail for maybe a mile mile and a half i don't know i had to uh 
bandage up my finger a little bit. Man, that uh, that pole, it got me pretty good. It got me right in the crease. And uh, had a uh, put some Luco tape on it <laughs> because the band aids that I got, it's in a, it's in a place where band aids really aren't aren't gonna stay. So I uh, made a sliver of uh, Luco tape and uh, I put it around and I put some like Neosporin stuff on it thing is though this trail looks a little bit drier than the uh the last trail that we was on so kudos to that and if you see straight ahead we have another sign so i wonder if we're actually going to get on another trail up here because I didn't think that we were on this Raven Ridge Trail for that long um I believe we take this trail back to the uh, back to the car or back to the bear trail that we were just on um, and that's when we complete the loop uh that's how we're going to do it but <clears throat> i don't think we hop on it for very long before then Woo. that wind boy all right you remember how i said a while back that the Raven Ridge Trail was not as bad as the other one. <sighs> Might have lied. Check this out. <laughs> yep. That is 100% mud. And, uh... <sighs> you just kind of have no choice but to walk through it. You can see... The sandals are a bit... Muddy. Everything is kind of muddy. <laughs> uh, welcome to the soggy dolly sods. Or the soggy sods. Because <laughs> that's kind of what it's like. Oh. And then uh, we got back into this like canopy forest area. Ooh. It is nice back here. Ooh. Kinda dark. It is 524 right now. Um six o'clock. We are going to start looking for camp, I think. Just to give us a couple hours at camp um, so we can cook dinner and set up the tent properly and all that fun stuff. Find a pretty good tree to hang up our bear bag. Uh, this is kind of a neat area. It kind of reminds me of, just in a way, kind of reminds me of the Smoky Mountains. Just in a way. Alright, well, I think we made the decision to uh, go ahead and camp here tonight. Um, don't really want to camp on top of a ridge with this wind. Uh, and it is supposed to get a little colder tonight. So having a nice wind block by the trees um, will be nice. Um, so one of the kind of one of the rules about this place is they do have they have a ton of camping. They do. All they do ask though is that you stay at established sites, which is okay by me because 
I understand that, you know, if if everyone makes a campsite, then the vegetation is just going to get trashed and everything like that. So they ask you to stay pretty much at established sites, and they ask you that if you're going to build a fire, do it in an established uh, campfire ring already established. Um, okay by me too. Half the time I don't even make a fire. Um, in fact, tonight, well I may, tonight, I may not, I don't know. Uh, we did drive like seven and a half hours to get down here, so woke up. We were supposed to wake up at three. Uh, we didn't really get out of bed until... 6.30. Yeah, 6, 6.30. So, a little late start, but uh, we were pretty tired and... I just know that we're gonna get a good night's sleep tonight because uh you know the drive and plus uh we did knock out about four three or four miles uh my watch is a little off because i turned my watch on when we was walking back and forth um so the watch said 4.19 miles um we'll call it four because that's what that's pretty much what i think um but anyway, enough of me blabbing. What I'm going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and get the duplex set up. Um, I'll show you guys that and then uh, I'll show you guys the quilt that I'm using tonight and uh, show you Gina's quilt that she always uses. And then I think we're going to eat dinner and then just like chill out. Um, another great thing about this area is plenty of trees to hang a bear bag. Uh, so that's not gonna be an issue. Uh, the only thing is, we're gonna be using my water to cook with tonight because there is no water nearby. But I did check on the GPS. Um, there's a stream about 1.9 miles away, 1.19 something. We'll call it two miles. So not that big of a deal. Um, I've, I've got the Gatorade, so. Um, I can just drink Gatorade and then tomorrow I'll uh, fill up on water. But let me go ahead and get uh, get camp all set up, and then I kind of want to take off these sandals, take off the take off the socks at least, because uh, they're soggy. <laughs> all right, so this is pretty much how I'll always pack our tents. Uh, I don't use stuff sacks. Uh, I particularly do not like Z packs of stuff sacks. Uh, they're kind of too small for the item, and you end up like just wasting a bunch of time in the morning just stuffing away like your tent uh, and your and your quilt. So what I do is I just wrap it up. <laughs> And I kind of just stick it on top of my pack. Um, and that's worked out for me really well. Um, it's easy. It's fast. And if it does rain or anything, then I can easily just stick it outside in the mesh. Or I can kind of stick it um, on top of my waterproof uh, uh, trash compactor liner. So no water gets inside of the actual backpack. And then when it's sunny or something, I can just take it out and shake it real good and let it dry out in the sun. But that's the system that I use and I really like it. For this trip, <clears throat> because we're sharing a tent, um, I'm carrying the tent and Gina agreed to carry my sleeping pad. Um, my sleeping pad weighs 12 ounces, the tent weighs 21 ounces so it kind of balances itself out um i am carrying a little bit of extra weight but that's no big deal and then for cooking uh, i usually carry the stove and i carry the pot and then gina is carrying the uh the fuel canister so <clears throat> evens itself out it works for the both of us and uh if you're hiking with a partner and you're guaranteed to always kind of camp with each other it be you know <clears throat> that's your battle buddy then a system like this works awesome to cut down on your uh, on your weight if I 
if I were carrying everything myself, like my whole entire setup, my setup would probably be close to nine to 10 pounds. But because we're sharing everything and we're sharing the weight, my, my setup is only like 7.3 pounds or something crazy. Uh, it's the pro probably the lightest load um, I've ever had in this backpack. And I gotta admit, I know why <laughs> everyone uses it. <clears throat> this pack uses a light load because using the load compared to what I was using in Arizona, uh, 10 times better. Like, it's just, it's so much better. I, no aches, no pains. And today I was not using the uh, hip belt pocket at all. I mean, the hip belt, uh, the hip belt at all. So, I'm going to, uh, Quit blabbing again and uh, get this tent set up. Uh, this way, I was thinking. Yep. Make sure when you stick out those corners, uh -huh. they're angled. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the ground, you a tree raise? <coughs> the ground pretends to be soft, <laughs> but then, <laughs> as you dig deeper, <laughs> it is not that soft. <laughs> That's probably on a tree root. Yeah, because this is going to you know, like butter over here. So. I'm pretty sure you're on tree roots. Oh no. Hit rocks right there too. <laughs> oh no, mine went in pretty good. It don't matter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what we do with this tent, we like to stake out all four all four sides first and then we like to stake out where the trekking pole goes and then I'll do the extra pull out uh, after I get everything uh, locked down with the uh, with the trekking pole you want it high or you want um, it? I want it high okay. I think I'm gonna go higher yeah, go a little higher. You like it? Yeah, you know, like a little high. Yeah. All right. Well, duplex is all set up. Uh, I do kind of want to show you guys this trick that um, we saw another YouTuber do. Um, his name's Jay Wu. Um, he was hiking the Arizona Trail, um, <clears throat> and we was following along on his uh, vlogs before we left for the Arizona Trail. And one of the things that he did with his duplex is he takes uh, he takes a stick, right? He takes a stick and he puts it in the middle right there on his back pullout, and that actually raises it quite a bit. Um, away from your head um a simple stick but he's the only person that i've ever seen do it and i've done it well gina has another tent that's sort of like this tent and she did it and uh yeah it actually improves the uh the head space in the uh, tent quite a bit um also before we before we brought this out we did clean the inside of it from our John Muir Trail trip, and uh, I did have to tape it a little bit on the bottom. Um, the rocks, the rocks on the John Muir Trail um, got the uh, got the bottom scuffed up a little bit. So um, everything else is fine. We went over it, and uh, I got Dyneema tape. I always carry Dyneema tape anyway, just in case there were to uh, be a tear or a rip or anything I can quickly um, field repair this 
But I'll tell you what, this shelter right here probably has to be my favorite shelter I've ever used. Um, and we've used this thing a lot. Uh, Maroon Bells, Rocky Mountains, the whole John, uh, John Muir Trail. Uh, this trip, uh, uh, countless, countless backpacking trips. And uh, the Dyneema is still going strong. Um, and other than that scuff mark, really, which could have been my fault, um, there is nothing wrong with this setup um, at all. And the amount of space that you get and the fact that you have two doors and, you know, I mean, you can sleep with your significant other because uh, what we were doing on the Arizona Trail, it made sense in our head, hey, bring two shelters, but in practicality, um, no. Probably never do it again. I don't care how bad we stink. Uh, we, we'll just deal with it. Because uh, <laughs> having, just having one shelter, uh, it just makes so much sense. Um, <clears throat> not only that, but if you're a single person and you got the duplex, you got a palace. And it's like 21 ounces, so um, just incredible. But enough about the tent. Um, I'm going to go ahead blow up the sleeping pad, which takes forever, and uh, get it blowed up, get my quilt all shook out and everything, and then I kind of want to get out of these wet socks, because they're... Alright, well, we're sitting down, making some dinner. It is... Uh, it feels late. Well, it feels like it's getting late. 616. Uh, not that late. Uh, I try to start a fire, but I think the wood's just too wet around here. Um, whatever. Um, got all of the stuff in the, uh, in the tent. Uh, cooking some dinner right now. Uh, Gina is having... Side bean and cheese burrito. Yeah, by Packet Gourmet. That is really good stuff. And then I'm having Texas State Fair chili by Packet Gourmet. My all time favorite meal. Uh, it's going to be a cold one tonight, so I figured that's pretty good when it's nice and cold out. Uh, got the water heating up on my tokes, titanium. Uh, cook pot with my BRS stove. I've used a BRS stove before, but that's the first time we've actually used this Tokes cook pot. Um, I'll go ahead and show you the tent situation. Uh, now later tonight, we will put the Polante packs probably in the bottom of our tent because they're small enough. Um, but I'm using a... 40 degree quilt tonight by hammock gear um, I forgot what the top quilts are called but that is a hammock quilt um, I just use it on the ground too uh, it's 40 degrees it's supposed to drop down to the low 40s tonight so I should be all right um, and then Gina's got the 10 degree Enlightenment equipment, uh, Enigma. So, she always brings that quilt, and uh, I like to switch it up every once in a while if I think the uh, temperatures are going to be decent. Uh, I may end up having to uh, use a little bit of her cover tonight if it gets too cold, but might be alright. Uh, got the buff. That's got two pairs of extra socks in there and my sleep tights. I'll put those on right before bed and I'll put the extra socks on after I wash off the mud from my feet and uh, I put some uh, like healing cream that my uh, mom got for me. Um, I got I get cracked heels so uh, that helps. But that is pretty much that's pretty much it guys uh, we're just gonna sit and uh, 
I took off the wet socks. I really wish I could have got a fire started so I could have dried out those socks, but I'll dry them out tomorrow. I'll just hang them on the outside of my pack. As far as the jackets go, um, this is the Torrid Apex uh, jacket from Enlightenment Equipment. Um, I don't know if I showed you guys this jacket or not, but this is this is my new one. Um, I used to have an orange one. Now I kind of use that one for work, and uh, I, I went ahead and bought me a new one. And then Gina is wearing the same thing, except hers is blue. So, oh, it works. Um, well, we're pretty much we're just gonna eat and then brush her teeth and then uh, hang her bear bag which I might go go ahead and do that now while it's light out and then cook some dinner and eat go to bed so I'll talk to you guys inside the tent when uh, all the chores are done but I'm um, first things first I gotta I gotta get me some food all right well, all packed up, ready to go. It's 10 o'clock. Um, so, a lot later start than what we wanted, but that's okay. Um, the sun doesn't go down until about 8 o'clock, so we might be walking until about 6 tonight. Um, like I said, 10 to 12, I mean, 12 to 15 miles today. I'm pretty sure we can at least knock out the 12. Um, but we're going to get out of this forested area because, believe it or not, we were colder inside of our tents than we were outside. And this whole entire area is completely shaded. So, <clears throat> uh, the sun is peeking out just a tad bit. Um, and uh, I'm trying to warm up a little bit. Got my rain jacket on just to uh, block out some of the wind. And, uh, yeah, let's get to walking. Uh got across a pretty big mud puddle coming up soon too um, hopefully we can walk across that without getting our feet too wet <clears throat> well we just seen this little side trail and uh, some pretty cool rock formations up here so Gina said let's go check it out so we're gonna go check it out <laughs> that? huh that yeah go going in there but check out this area, guys. Ooh. That's cool. Yeah. I like the sand. Yeah, I did here. Look how smooth these rocks are. That is really neat. That's really cool. Uh -huh. So just kind of goes all the way around hang a go all the way around just because it's probably the same thing but pretty cool you see all the the sand it's yeah I know really cool. didn't syntax say that was from like all the water yeah this area had to be underwater like millions of years ago yeah Pretty cool area though. I like I like stuff like this. <laughs> it's just like right there is the trail. Y'all can see it. It's in white. And then uh, we just came up here. Oh wow. Little piney area. I mean there's you can't do tents, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a place like or... Yeah. Yeah. It'd be awesome. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, nice view out there between the trees. Oh wow. Good view for lunch. Yeah, this is cool. <sighs> if I did not need to, I mean, if I needed to eat lunch, I'd stop here. Sure, yeah. Uh, 
pretty early right now and we haven't haven't gone very far today um, I just ate my breakfast <laughs> my very very late breakfast um, and I only ate probably three-fourths of that I'll eat the rest here in a minute when uh, I get hungry again but really cool Look at that view. Uh, uh, uh. Sorry about the wind noise, guys. We're on this open ridge. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that we might have taken like four different paths that we probably shouldn't have took. Uh, I consulted the GPS and it said we was right on the trail the whole entire time. So, not really worried about it, but... uh little confusing back in the uh, big rhododendron bushes um, there's just so many different paths and uh, so it's kind of like hey pick pick your own adventure <laughs> that is that's what you're gonna be doing but as you can tell now on these rocks that we've been on for a while now and uh, it's hard to get enough like get a pace going because every time you get a pace going you have to stop in a way because you made a wrong turn or something so pretty easy to get lost uh, on this section so far unless we just screwed up and then we continued with our screw up which could have happened but it's pretty uh, pretty easy to do hey look at that view that's awesome Yeah, so this has kind of been the sod so far, like, like I was saying, like, you go back in some woods, and then you come out to a field. Go back in some woods, come out to a field. Climb some rocks, field, <laughs> rocks, trees, field. And, uh, that has been the theme. Look at that water. That's a nice little lake. Nice lake down there. Sorry about the wind noise, guys. Again, we're on top of this ridge and it's kind of wide open up here. So, lots of wind. Uh, <laughs> look at this view. Man, this reminds me of like, I don't know, like the Rockies without the big view. Like that flat top mountain that we was on? Yeah. Yeah. Look at those views. Oh man. Beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. I got a campsite right there. I think. No. Not campsite. All the way around. <laughs> Pretty cool. So we're gonna eat lunch about two o'clock. Um, we got a late start this morning, like I told you guys. Um, trying to crank out as many miles between now till two as we can, and then pretty sure we're gonna be hiking till six or seven, given the pace that we can go at. Um, might be one of those one of those nights 
where you would like to get some more miles in, but I don't know. As soon as we get on some straightaways and kind of get out of this rocky stuff, we can start making up time, but it's really tough um, when you got constantly backtrack and check the GPS and, you know, go off trail, go back on trail and stuff like that. It's just, uh, it's kind of tough, not going to lie. The terrain itself, it's not tough. Um, this is probably, I mean, this is the easiest hiking I've done in quite a while. Uh, a little bit of uphill and a little bit of downhill, but nothing, nothing where you're, you know, stopping halfway and kind of breathing heavy and, you know, where your knees are, you know, hurting or anything like that. So terrain is, I mean, it's, it is what it is. It's, it's not bad. Um, the big thing out here though is all of the different trails um, the water, the mud, and right now, kind of the rocks. Uh, but I do want to show you guys something. So, I, I thought I'd show you at lunch, but I think right now is a good opportunity to show you. Alright, so I am wearing sandals. No, I have not stubbed my toe at all. And let me show you why. Uh, because I fixed the camera here. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. The, uh, the gimbal did not want to turn around. All right. So, you can see my foot. All right. And that's why. That's why I had not stubbed my toe. Because my toes are not actually at the edge of the sandals. Same thing in the back. I have plenty of room. So, if I come across the rock, boom. I mean, you know, I'm hitting it. I'm not hitting my toe. All right, uh, grab some water. Uh, cleaned off my socks from yesterday, too. Uh, they were still a little bit dirty. And then cleaned off my sunglasses where they fell in the mud. And I think we're going to continue on. Big shout out to Red Wing, though, for uh, showing me Mio. Uh, but if you're watching this, I always get Mio now on every single trip. <laughs> Uh, it's become like a staple uh, in my food. So, got some meal, uh, got a little caffeine, and then I got some Propel in my Gatorade bottle. Um, just some extra electrolytes. All right. Well, we definitely found uh, a lunch spot actually a really good spot um this trail it was muddy at first but the more we've been on it kind of the more i like it honestly it follows a creek bed um there's plenty and i mean plenty of water um so you never feel like that you're you know out of water um it is a little wet it's a little soggy in some sections but so far not bad ton of good camping around here guys uh if you want good really good camping stone co trail is big stone co trail um is it's probably the spot um lots of good camping plenty of, plenty of water um so you're not dry camping so but right now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and take off my take off my sandals or take off my socks and uh, go wash them in the creek super fast and then I'm gonna put them in the Sun to dry so there's a big old sunny patch right there and then the creek that we crossed to get over to this over in that direction is the actual trail uh, you can see two on my watch. Uh, we've gone 5.52 miles. It's 1.30. 
so I stopped a half an hour earlier than what I really wanted to, but um, I figured this is a really nice spot, and uh, you know we might not get the opportunity for a uh, a good a good lunch spot. Um, and like I said, I can I can go ahead and wash out my socks because um, they are nice and uh, nice and wet. <laughs> and they're filled with mud. Go over here. Feet are clean. This wicked blue citrus. It is caffeinated. I like my caffeine. <laughs> That is good. Gina has some uh, coffee. Yep, some BO coffee. Mm -hmm. coffee. What kind is it? It's Starbucks toasted white chocolate mocha. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> She's been big into coffee. <clears throat> Myself, I got some spam for lunch. Love some spam. Mmm. Even though well, I will say about spam. Here in Indiana, well, in Indiana, not here, um, but in Indiana, a spam packet, a single spam packet, it's like a dollar. When we was in Arizona, a spam packet was like two twenty-five per single. Now, I bought like 10 singles, so you can do the math, but... Um, little pricey in Arizona. Uh, not only that, but the, I believe the cashier lady, uh, she said, oh, those are new. I've never seen those before. Um, kind of odd considering that spam has been around for, um, for a long time. Mm -hmm. But Even at our grocery stores, they quit carrying the singles. And when I found, found them again, I bought like 20. Because yep. I knew he would use them over time. Yeah. So. Stuff's disgusting. <laughs> Big shout out to people out here. Um, I saw like maybe one wrapper, and that could have been by accident um, that someone had left it. Other than that, no trash. Absolutely no trash. And, uh, Big shout out to everyone that comes out here and they pack everything back out because I know right now our national parks, our national forests, our wilderness areas are getting trashed. Um, you know, I always make sure to pack out um, my trash and then um, I'll carry someone else's trash too. If or I'll, if I find trash on the ground, I'll pack it out myself. Um, but really big shout out to everyone that's coming out here. Um, keep doing what you're doing and uh, keep advocating to help keep our national parks and our public lands uh, trash free. Um, Yep. Well, back on the trail. And 
Oh, but not bad. Yep, it is pretty. <clears throat> really good camp spots back here, by <clears throat> on this trail. Ah, uh, got across this little stream or this creek, and uh, it's not little actually. It's pretty big, but not deep. And uh, Gina was stepping on a rock, and she just completely soaked her shoes. Got the mud off. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yep, yeah. and uh, yeah, of course, <laughs> I got a little wet too. Yeah, so it's kind of like I said. A little confusing. Um, not too terribly bad, but right back there, right before you crossed the creek, it was a little confusing. Because uh, <clears throat> we were on the other side and we were looking. And then uh, could not find the, uh, could not find the trail. And this, this looks beaten in. <clears throat> and uh yeah i see shoe prints and stuff like that so i'm gonna go ahead and guess that this is the trail actually i'm not guessing i checked the gps <laughs> but a little confusing oh look at this area guys it is pretty it's pretty cool it uh definitely has a I don't know. It just has a cool feel to it. Ton of camping. I mean, there's another fire pit. Probably another fire pit over there. I mean, everywhere you look throughout, like, these sections, there's just going to be a ton of camping. Water is very, very close. So, all right, guys. Well, we're on the rocky point trail um we came to the intersection where the tr i think it's an unofficial trail where lion's head is um uh, i saw saw some karens right there talked to gina about it then i looked at the gps lion's head somewhere is somewhere up there uh this is the unofficial trail port uh this trail should also, if we do take this trail, it should link back up to the trail that we're on right now. Um, so, I think we're going to go for it. Um, it's only 349. We got to do the miles anyway. So, this will link back up. So, might as well try it. Um, it's going to be a little steep. And I know it is going to be extremely rocky. Um, just from some of the videos that I've seen, uh, and we might have to consult the GPS from time to time and follow the, uh, the Karens in the, uh, in the area. Um, so some of this might be a little tricky, and then I think... Uh, I think Lion's Head involves actual rock scrambling, much like this. Not 100% sure, but it would be pretty cool to, uh, to get to see it. Because, uh, I heard it's pretty cool. Um, supposedly, it's this big rock, and it's shaped like a lion's head. Uh... So it has, you know, like a lion's head um, detail, like in the rock. Okay, more Karens up there. <laughs> we are going straight up this, like, embankment. Uh, it is, it is extremely rocky. Oh, fuck. Pretty cool. Has anyone ever seen the Mortal Kombat movie, the original Mortal Kombat movie, where Sub Zero and Scorpion are fighting? 
doesn't this look like it? <laughs> like, <laughs> this whole entire thing reminds me of that, that scene. All right, some people kind of close by. I'm going to put away the camera just to uh, be respectful. But, uh, yeah, I, I was walking through here, and I was like, man, I was like, this reminds me of the original Mortal Kombat. <laughs> if you have not seen that, it's a little cheesy, uh, but I was a huge Mortal Kombat fan growing up, so of course I've seen it. <laughs> Look at this view. Oh my god. Ain't this awesome, guys? I'm glad we took that trail now. This is sweet. I don't know what Lion's Head is. I presume it's kind of up that direction. But there's some people over there, so I wanted to get something on film for you guys. And look at this. Oh, that's sick, man. That is nice. You crazy for standing like right on it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, so. this is definitely the best view that we've seen here. Yeah. Like, by a mile. Freaking amazing. This is awesome. Best view in Dolly Sods, 100%. And if you take the trail that me and Gina took and don't take the scramble up, it was easy getting, getting up here. Yeah, and if you want to camp up here, there's probably no water up here, so you would have to bring your own water. But camping up here is freaking amazing. So, <sighs> that's all I can really say about it. Um, pretty, pretty neat. I'm glad, definitely glad that we uh, we took it. Uh, kind of sucks doing extra miles, but... <sighs> Yeah, it was definitely worth it. Well, we made it back <clears throat> down to the main trail, which didn't take no time at all. Uh, it's only 4.37, so maybe 20 minutes round trip, maybe 30, uh, if that. Uh, so pretty easy to do. Uh, yeah, no way we was gonna rock, rock scramble down that. That uh, <clears throat> that looked pretty, uh, pretty steep. I imagine climbing up it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but climbing down something like that, uh, especially at the end of the day when you're tired. Uh, no, thank you. All right, guys, it's about 6:25. I'm starting to kind of look for some campsites or at least keep my options open. I hear a big body of water. I think that's Red Creek. Um, and we seem to be going downhill. So I'm thinking we're slowly starting to get off this ridge. And if that is a big body of water, right around this area, um, there's really good camping um, right by the water. So. We might actually get a really good campsite tonight, uh, which would be nice. I could definitely fall asleep next to some water. Might be a little colder, but honestly, right now it's like, I don't know. It's got to be in the high 50s because uh, I'm still like sweating. Um... My watch says 13.39 miles. Might say about 15 by the time we get down there. Who knows? Uh, but we're crossing like a lot of like a lot of water. Uh, try not to try not to get my feet wet. Oh my gosh! All right, <laughs> let me let me show you guys. Let me show you guys this. Yeah. Yep. How do we do this without totally getting soaked? I have no idea. Uh, I mean, there's some rocks in the middle. Huh? Yeah, I mean, okay. Go ahead. All right, we're gonna try to get across this without. 
getting getting ankle deep in uh in this mud but i'll put the camera away so i don't accidentally drop it that would be a bad thing all right guys well finally made it to camp um there is like a lot of people over here but uh, we ran into the guys that we talked to earlier today and uh on top of lion's head and uh we're kind of close by them they're pretty cool guys they're from uh, ohio so pretty much the same neck of the woods that me and gina's from um uh, the ohio valley same thing um right now we're just kind of sitting in our own little spot kind of like in the middle here uh, all the good real good camp spots um are taken of course but we're gonna have some uh, outdoor herbivore. Let me show you guys this. This is Cheddar Mac. Uh, yeah, it's vegan. Um, ready in 10 minutes. Okay. Should be pretty good. I've never had this before. Uh, Gina actually picked this up a while back, actually. So pretty good um hope it's good and then <laughs> for uh dessert which is one of my favorite things mom's banana pudding and we have had this like a bunch and let me tell you guys this thing is uh this is probably the best dessert i've ever had <laughs> This stuff is, it's fire, man. It's so good. Uh, if you guys have never had this before, definitely try it. Uh, Packet Gourmet, they make really good stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, pretty cool. All right, everybody. Well, it's about nine o'clock right now. Uh, I've actually been laying inside the tent here for a while. Um, all we did pretty much ate and uh, got cleaned up, got settled in. Outdoor herbivore, that's going to be a no-go for me. Uh, yeah, just not very good at all. Um, I don't know how you mess up mac and cheese, but it did, and uh, I don't know what it was but it was not very good. Uh, leads a really weird uh, aftertaste like in your mouth. Um, the banana pudding though, that helped. <laughs> that helped because uh, even Gina, like, we, it was so funny. Like we just, uh, we looked at each other and we was like, nope. And Gina's like, I'm, I'm only eating this much and I'm carrying the rest out. <laughs> And uh, I kind of did the same. It was uh, it was awful. <sighs> Alright. Well, we're going to lay here. <laughs> go to sleep. And then uh, we looked at the map. Or in the GPS, I mean. And it looked like we only had about four, four miles um, back total. I don't know how accurate that is. But, I mean, we'll see tomorrow. And then, uh, yeah, be hiking on out of here. Um, but until then, I'll talk to you guys later. Good night. Good morning, everybody. Well, it's day three. Uh, uh, it's about nine o'clock right now. We slept in a little bit. Checked the uh, GPS last night, and uh, looks like we only got about four more miles to go to the end of this trip, which isn't too bad um i believe we have a nice little climb first thing in the morning and then uh once we get on top of the plateau it should be pretty uh pretty easy like it was the uh the first day um it has started raining on and off though um it rained pretty much all night last night which we didn't expect we thought it was going to rain 
Ash, we knew it was going to rain today, but we didn't know it was going to rain uh, last night, so <sighs> just trying to get woke up and uh, going to get packed up here shortly and then get back to it and then get back to the car. But last night we slept excellent. This, uh, this whole entire area is super nice. So you guys come down here, at least check out the area. All right, that's all for now. Get some caffeine in me, get woke up, and then uh, I'll bring you guys back. Well, made it to another trail, uh, trail sign. We're taking Upper Red Creek Trail number 509. And then this uh, linked up with the Dobbin Trail, which we will hop on the Dobbin Trail for like 0.2. <laughs> And then we'll take uh, Raven, what is it, Raven Ridge? Yeah, I think it's Raven Ridge Trail. Um, take it back up to uh, Bear Rocks Trail and then uh, walk on out of here. Just check the GPS. Uh, we got a little bit, uh, about three miles left or something. Um, the car was actually about four point four away or 4.2 or something like that so we've gone almost a mile um, maybe maybe a little bit longer um, but it's taking it's taking a while because of all of the mud this uh, some of the stuff we've been stepping through is just it's insane like how muddy it is especially since we got that rain uh it just did not make things uh any better it's just it's crazy the trail is like a mud pit so but this is kind of like what we've been walking through this is nothing like this is easy compared to some of the stuff earlier today uh Huh? That one moves. <laughs> that one moves, huh? Oh. oh, man. Watch my step. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah, I did. And got to clean some of it off. Yeah, like. Everything's just like a big mud pit. Came to a nice little creek. And uh <laughs> she is trying to clean her uh, legs off as much as she possibly can here. And then uh I've done walk through it. Clean my clean my feet off. Get some of the uh some of the mud that's caked on. But does feel good though. It does feel good. This whole entire area is, uh, man, it's just marshy. It's just bogged down. Uh, checked the GPS a little while ago. We was, oh, uh, 2.5 away, 2.6, something like that. Uh, make it through these thorny bushes type things and we came to another is this a Dobbin yeah this might be Dobbin this is Dobbin we're only gonna be on this thing for a minute yeah Dobbin trail Dobbin gray trail all right so here's the thing with this trail um, if you guys do come out here don't take this trail. Uh, I heard Dobbin Grade is probably the worst in terms of mud and everything like that. Um, I'm gonna check the GPS again. I think we're going. I think we're going this way. Assume, but... Yeah, I'll double check, and then we'll meet up with Raven Ridge, um, which is only like 0.2 away. So, Gina's gonna hold the camera. Is it on?
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on. Hey, you can cut that out. <laughs> then it's over our GPS. Uh, no. I don't think we're going. We're going that way. We might be going around because there's a ridge over there. No, I think we might actually be going this way. Yeah, I think we are going this way. Kind of weird. Going, but going this way. All right, on our way back to the sign that we were just at, I screwed up, and instead of listening to Gina going right I went left and uh, it is a little confusing um, the GPS mark, uh, track was a little confusing it looked like it was a left but it's not we gotta go right and then I think it's gonna start heading up um, start heading up there so that's why it was so confusing but Look at these guys, man. They, uh, yeah. Looking a little dark out here. Uh, probably could start raining <laughs> anytime. I don't think it's going to be like thunderstorms or anything, but it is supposed to rain. And, uh, hopefully get out of here before it starts raining like it did earlier. Oh my gun here to where uh, we uh, crossed the creek on day one. Um, this is that part of the uh, creek that I couldn't show you guys because there was just too many people down here. But nice, nice area. Uh, good camping. Awesome creek. I want to say this is Red Creek. That's why the water has that red sort of tinge. Uh, I did grab some water here because I was, well, we was completely out of water. So, I did grab just a, uh, just a little Gatorade bottle for water. Stuck some Mio in there for the, uh, for the taste. And, uh, we cross over on these stepping stones right there and then you can kind of see the trail right there. And then it goes to the uh, to the left, I think. All right, guys. Well, we officially made it back to the vehicle. Uh, it's 3:03, which that's not too bad, I guess. Um, Dolly Sods lived up to the expectation of being wet, <laughs> being muddy, and being fun. Um, this, like I said, the whole loop is roughly 22 to 25 miles. So, not really high miles, but I tell you what, it was a lot of fun and uh, really happy to come down here and do it. If you got any questions, comments, or anything like that, drop them down below. Um, I'll try to answer y'all's comments the best I can. Um, I'll leave the, uh, the most notable uh, gear in the uh, comments down below as well. Uh, I guess that is it. You guys be good, be safe, and I'll see you guys on the trail.